Welcome to Hobby Clubhouse with a review of the SDX Standard Zaza V. The SDX Standard line was introduced in 2016 as Bandai's entry-level SD kit. The line seems to be aimed at new markets like younger fans or western territories, with their low price of just 660 yen. And it's also Bandai's first modern Gundam model made in China, which has now expanded into the Sangokuden and the SD Gundam World lines. But before we talk more about the X Standard line, there is a companion video of this with the full painted build of the Zaza B, so check that out. Links in the top right corner and also in the description below. Okay, back to the X Standard line. Gundam model fans mostly haven't liked the line very much, and with good reason. Because as you can see here, the X Standard RX-78 really falls short of the SDCX's color separation. The X Standard does come with stickers, but I really think there are two other much more fatal cost-cutting measures in the X Standard line. First is the weapons, which are often molded as a single flat panel and with basic details. And then the other is the hollowing out in the back of the legs. I mention these two because even for an experienced modelers, these flaws are really difficult to fix, if they can be fixed at all. So it just didn't make any sense for a lot of Gundam model fans to buy any of the line. And for a time, it seemed as if the line was abandoned, with the last new release being the Tri-Burning Gundam way back in March 2017, and that's over three and a half years ago. But we're not counting the recent weird Hello Kitty bundles, of course. Then out of nowhere, Zazobi and New Gundam are announced, which made many people do a double take, like, wait, is that a typo? X Standard? Do you mean SDCX? And no, they didn't mean SDCX, and here we are, four months later, with the Zazobi and the New Gundam. Why this sudden return? Does this mean that the X Standard line will get new releases? No one knows for sure. But back to what we do have at hand, the Zaza B was released on November 14, 2020 in Japan for the line standard price of 660 yen. It comes in a small format box which is 15 by 20 and a half by 5 centimeters, as is common for the line. The box art is a 3D model render of the kit against the standardized white tile background, which is pretty minimalistic and in line with the entry level target market. The front of it shyly mentions it's made in China, but of course it says Bandai Hobby Center Quality, which is really their way of saying it's just as good, we swear. The side of the box includes just a few studio shots, and on every box they mention the compatibility of HG kits because of them using 3mm holes and pegs throughout. The other side has just the Zaza B's front and back, and it kind of feels like they ran out of things to say about the kit. Inside the box, we get the kit spread across 5 runners, with one of them being polycaps. There's quite a few stickers on the sheet here, starting with the green ones for the head camera and then for the mono eye, two black ones for the collar, two for the knees, then a the yellow one for the mega particle cannon on the belly button, and then two wraparound ones with the pipes around it, and there's an emblem for Char for the front skirt, then four for the vents on the shoulders, two red strips for the forearms, and a big one for the shield along with two little ones for the corners of it, and finally, two for the front and back of the beam tomahawk's handle. Now this all seems like a lot, but really, it's actually slightly less than many other kits that you get in the line. Then after the stickers, we have the instructions, which have the same box shards on the back side, and some suggestions for bashing together some parts using the 3mm holes. Part of the assembly instructions round out the color side, and the black and white side is all for assembly instructions. And here's a quick full turnaround of the assembled kit after about 20 minutes of assembly and before any stickers are applied. And it really doesn't look too bad, mostly thanks to the Zazabi's design not really having a lot of colors on it. And then here's the kit with all the stickers applied, which is a nice improvement with the addition of all the yellow details. The red on the kit is actually slightly desaturated, which may be down to the choice of materials used. But most Zazabi kits tend to go with a much brighter, saturated red color, but this is not really like something that's going to ruin the kit or anything. Notably, the back of the legs are not hollowed out, which I haven't seen in any other X Standard kit, though really I haven't seen a whole lot of them. The bottom of the funnel containers do have hollowed spaces, as well as the fuel tanks and also the inner sides of the biceps, but for the black pieces, they're really well hidden by the color, and for the red biceps, they're really quite out of the way. So at least compared to the RX-78, the Zaza B's hollowed spaces don't quite affect the kit nearly as much. And not only that, but these places are much easier to cover up with their simple geometry. 
A bit of a letdown are the shoulders, which from the side look really narrow and strange. Even the cuffs from the forearm are wider than these skirts on the shoulder. It's something that hurts the kit because you see it very easily when you pose it. Another oddly shaped part is the head. More specifically, it's how the head sits really high up. Now this is done so the back of the head has enough clearance for the funnels in the back, but even then, if you look at it from the front, I mean you, you can drop the head down quite a bit if the chin was made just a little bit smaller. But otherwise, it's not too bad, with many of the thruster details here molded directly into the pieces, like the side skirts here and the side of the legs. I mean they aren't spectacular, but they are expected on a basic kit like this. And the mono eye here is actually really nicely sculpted, which is a very important part for any SD kit. Now looking at the seams, of course we have to understand that this is a basic kit, but you know, nonetheless there are a few seams, like the long one running down the whole length of the head. And then there are the ones along each of the shoulders. And then there are these along the front of the legs, even though on the back they are disguised as panel lines. Now these are not big challenges to clean up, nor are they a big deal if you choose to not clean them and leave them as is. For the weapons, of course we have to look at the waffle thin beam shot rifle. On the one hand, they made it long and big as it should be, and it has two 3mm pegs on the butt, but on the other hand, it is so so thin. It's so thin that you need to add a lot of imagination to even see it as a proper weapon. Some people will be able to forgive this for the price, but I doubt anyone will be happy with it. Next is the beam tomahawk, which is in all yellow. There's a slit on it if you want to connect it onto the shield, but you can't store it inside the shield because the blade is molded on and it's going to get in the way. It's not a complex weapon, and this is a fine second weapon to get inside the box. Last we have the shield, which is nice and long, going from the ground up to the chin of the Zazabi. So the shield does a lot to complete the look of the mobile suit, especially when the beam shot rifle really doesn't pull its own weight. The underside of the shield has a few 3mm holes and a 3mm peg. And then there's a slit which we've already seen for the beam tomahawk. The missiles at the front of the shield is molded here, although if you turn to the back, you can see only the upper half of it is actually molded. Okay, let's move on to the articulation, which is largely in line with other X standard kits. Starting from the top, the head can dip forward and backwards only a little bit, but because it sits so high up, it rotates a full circle with ease. The shoulders are on a swing up poly cap and gives a very nice forward swing, though you can very easily dislodge it. The whole arm goes around a full circle without any problems, and then the arms rotate along the bicep. And the elbows fold 90 degrees, and about 30 degrees outwards. The fists of course pivot on a ball joint, as far as the cuffs will allow. And the entire upper torso rotates along the waist in a full circle, which is surprising, and nothing gets caught. And then there are the legs that swing along a single ball joint. And there's no knee on them, so you don't get any bend. But last but not least are these rather interesting SDX standard ankle joints. The ball joints connecting them are rotated backwards 90 degrees, so while they can barely angle upwards, they can go way back until the angle hits the back of the leg armor. And along with that, the feet can swivel side to side a great deal, again, limited only by the leg armor. It's a very nice bit of engineering that adds a lot of value to the kit without increasing the cost. The funnel containers and the fuel tanks on the back are all molded in and they can't really move. So let's round off this review with the Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the SDX Standard Zazabi. Number 1, it's one of the best X Standard kits. Of the 3 weaknesses of the X Standard kits mentioned at the start, the Zazabi dodges the bad color separation and the hollow spaces. The beam rifle may still be far too thin, but given the standard set by the line, it manages to punch quite above the average. Number 2, it's an excellent introduction to Gundam. Now while some people don't like how the Zaza B is just loved without question and spammed quite a lot in products, we should also admit that it's just a good design that's attractive to people who aren't super into Gundam. So it makes sense that the Zaza B sells well. And I imagine many people will be won over by its looks and get this first dip in the Gundam and start liking the series. It's a good thing this kid exists because it's a nice choice for a sibling or nephew or yourself to turn them into fans of Gundam and Gundam models. Number 3. There are better alternatives. 
Now the BB Senshi number 382 Zaza B is superior in every way to this kit, and it's not a whole lot more money at 1100 yen. Unless you're curious and like experiencing different models or just love the Zaza B in any form, there's really no reason to choose this X standard kit over the BB Senshi. And if you're a modeler looking for really nice SD Zaza B kits, this isn't really a good choice no matter how you cut it. It's a good X standard kit, but that's sadly still quite a low bar. So that's it for the review of the X standard Zaza B. It graduates top of its class, but it doesn't make the honor roll. As a starter kit, it's a pretty good choice. Thank you so much for watching. Come hang out with us on social media with updates on upcoming videos. Links are in the description below. Or check out the companion video to this one with a fully painted build of the Zaza B. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.